<laughs> so this is one of the videos that I've always wanted to make and it's just been delayed for the longest because my network has been working fine and it has been no reason to upgrade. But one of my access points just went out and I was like, all right, now is the time. So I gotta swap out the access point. So might as well, let's go full Wi-Fi 7 and update my access points and my modem and pretty much everything. So today what I have for you is I'm gonna be setting up my Unify Dream Machine SE. Then I have a few Wi-Fi 7, what is this called? The U7 Pro? Yeah, got some U7 Pros. Also have my Enterprise 24 port switch. So this should be a cool network rack setup. Now, I have previously had some unified gear that was in my old house. And then when I moved to this house, I just pretty much snatched it out the wall and just threw it inside this network. It wasn't organized. It wasn't nothing. I just threw it up there just to get it up really quick. So now what's up? I'm going to go back and clean it up. And I ain't never go back and clean it up. So right now it's looking a mess. But this video is going to be a little different. I'm going to take it down to the basement. And we're just going to walk through the entire setup process because I love watching other videos. But they're setting up their network and racking. I said, man, one day I'm going to make my own. So we're going to try this out. Hope y'all enjoy. Okay, down in the basement. And this is what I'm working with. Listen, don't judge me. I literally snatched all of this out of my house and then threw it up in here as fast as I could to get some internet. But pretty much what we have here is the cloud gateway. Then I have my USG right here. Got my little Pi. Then I got, that's for the AT&T modem. I got my Finish Hue hub. Then I got this little cheap little switch down here. I mean, hey, it's been, it did its thing. I mean, it's been doing its thing. This is, I've had that for about, what, four years now? A little eight port switch and i promise when i first set this up it looked amazing in my other house but i literally snatched out the other house and just threw it in here and i always know it's gonna come back and clean this thing up one day but then i got like this surge protector like everything is just it's just all over the place and then i have all of my uh ethernet cables i got like two ap's that's connected right here but pretty much the first issue I have to deal with is as you can see this is a big old box and I want to put my network rack up top but I don't want it to be up that high so I think what I'm gonna do is lower this rack not the rack lower this box probably about a foot so that means I could put the rack right on top of it. So, yeah. That's what it is right now. So this might take quite a bit of work. This might take a few days to get done. But let's get into it.
done. All right, here it is. Let's start from the top. First up, you have the unified patch panel. All of the ethernet cables that runs throughout my house, they all connect right here. The patch panel has a few benefits. One, organization. Gives a professional appearance, ability to label all the ports, and it just give it an aesthetically appealing look. Just look nice and neat like that. Next up, you have flexibility. Makes it simpler to add, remove, or change any of the connections. And you probably noticed this is not where it was originally. And I quickly noticed I needed it at the top to allow easier access to it to switch things around because I had to do that already because I had stuff that was on the regular one gig ports, but I needed those on a 2.5 gig port. So I had to already switch around some cables. So that provided uh, that, that flexibility helped out a lot. Also for troubleshooting, makes it easy to identify and fix problems, which I already had and reduce the risk of having like a bunch of loose cables because you're plugging things out in and out too many times. You can break your ethernet cable port and it's easier to switch out that patch panel cable than it is to switch out a, a whole new cable running through your house. So that kind of like reduces the risk of breaking that jack and having any kind of loose connections and just adds an extra additional layer of durability. Next up on the stack is the Unify Enterprise Switch 24 port PoE. I really like this switch because it has 12 ports that are 2.5 gigs and that's what I wanted. I got 2.5 running through my house and I wanted to take full advantage of that. So I wanted this Enterprise Switch. This probably not be the option I would have took if I purchased today because there are several new switch options that are pretty amazing. And if I was buying today, I probably would have made a different option. But I do like this Enterprise switch. I do like that all 24 ports are PoE. Today now I realize I need some that's actually PoE++ and might be++++, plus plus plus, but that's a different video, different topic for another time. Next up is the Unified Dream Machine SE. At the time when I was doing this setup video, these were really the only two options. You had the Pro and you had the SE. The SE just means Special Edition, and I chose the SE because it came with a 2.5 gigabit WAN port. That is the speed I am getting from my internet provider. And at the time of purchase, these were the only two real options. Um, today, it's been a bunch of months since I've set this up. So I really wanted to set everything up and give my, a real opinion about everything before I made the video. During that time, <laughs> Unify has released so many new products. And if I was purchasing today, I would most likely have made a different decision, but you only can buy what was available at the time, so you can't really harp on that too long. Anyway, the Dream Machine SE is primarily used for all of the routing that's happening on your network. It's used for running all the unified applications like Protect and Access and Network. So all the unified apps just run right here on this device. Um, and it's just, really just pretty much in a basic form, the brains of the entire operation. Next on the rack is just this shelf. It pretty much houses my Philips Hue Hub, which controls all my smart bulbs. Got my Raspberry Pi running Pi Hole for my whole network and ad blocking. I do plan on add some more stuff on my Raspberry Pi, do some more smart home stuff. So that, that's, that's probably coming another video. But yeah, I just this shelf, just put it here to just kind of keep these devices nice, clean, and organized. Next up on the rack, I have these two blank plates. It's covering two open slots, which I intend to use for future upgrades. One specifically is NVR. NVR I'll be using for protect for storage of all my camera footage. I do plan on going with Unify for all its camera solutions and this will store all of my video recordings on the NVR. Also, I might need to upgrade to a larger rack because since the time I did this setup, Unify has since released a UNAS Pro, which I've been always wanted. I was looking into some other NAS products and I was just like, uh, I was probably gonna get it, but I was trying to wait to see if Unify was gonna release its own. They did, I want it, but it takes up two you unit. All likelihood, I will be getting a larger rack to be able to fit both the NVR 
and the UNAS. And the UNAS is pretty much to be able to store some network attack storage. So just have some kind of storage and backup and redundancy for storing any kind of files like these YouTube videos, like any documents, rather than just storing all those on your computer or on your phone, you can save backup to your pictures. Everyone in my house can have their own drive and I can just use the storage anyway, be able to access it anywhere. Just having your own personal cloud storage that's running in my basement. Last up, I have the UPS, CyberPower UPS. I know, I know, it's not the best solution. It's probably not the best product, but for me, this was a great option, especially at this price point. I lose power pretty often, and the power flickers even more, which it has gotten better, but the problem is that even though the power might be off for like five minutes or just flickers on and off, it shuts down the entire network and the Unify network just takes a very long time to get back up. Probably like 10, 15 minutes at times to spin everything back up when the power go down. This solves that problem because it allows me to run all of my networking devices, my access points or PoE, everything is connected right here. And based on the estimated load time, it says this will provide me 90 minutes of runtime. So for my needs, this is more than enough. And yes, maybe one day I might have a need for a larger power consumption or whatever reason, this might not have a long durability. But for right now, this is perfect. It's a great price point and it's more than enough for what I need right now. I know you might be wondering, Joe, what did I do with my AT&T modem? <laughs> when you like to know. I tucked it away inside of my network cabinet and it fits perfectly. It's out of the way and I think it looks very, very clean. My original idea was to have a, the network sitting on top of the network shelf. I had a shelf at the top and I was gonna put all of that, all of those devices on the top. I realized that it can fit inside of this little cabinet and I just had to find a way to get it to hold up in there. And I found this off of Amazon and it fits perfectly. So all in all, I think I did a pretty good job for my first time setting up a network rack. And this looks way better <laughs> than what I had before. So after about, I think this has about been three, four months of me running this, was it all worth it? For me, yes, <laughs> this was worth it 100%. Is it overkill for a home? Yes. Do I need this? No. Am I happy I did this? Yes. Should you do this? Well, that's up to you. I would say everyone should go for it. <laughs> but I mean, this is pretty expensive. If you care about your network performance, I mean, this, this is, has been amazing. And I'm all the way locked in. I will continue to update my setup. I already talked about a few parts of it. I'm already planning on um, updating. Unify is a great pro-consumer product and it integrates so well with each other. The products look named, they look like professional. The UI is amazing. Everything is just really, really easy to use. And you can get as technical or non-technical as you choose to with its UI because of how intuitive it is. Hopefully, Unify do sponsor me though, because I got a lot more things I wanna add to this, and this stuff is very expensive, and it would be nice to get some of these things for free. So Unify, if you out here listening, you know, you sign me over a few things. I need some I need some of those new cameras y'all got going on. As far as the performance I'm getting since I've upgraded my equipment, I'm running the U7 Pro access points which has a 2.5 gigabit port on it. And I'm getting like up to like 1.9 gigs down. Like I'm averaging about 1200, 1500 down. And like I've peaked at 1.9. And this is amazing. <laughs> getting these type of speeds on Wi-Fi is insane. And you might think that's, no one needs that. I don't care. I love it. No one in my house ever complains about network speeds. We are in meeting, we're on video calls, TVs, everything. Everything just runs so smoothly. I have never had any concern. So for me, I love everything about it. I think the speeds I'm getting is amazing. 
I think the product is amazing. Till Unify decides to sponsor me and send me some free stuff, I'll continue to save up my little coins <laughs> because I will be updating all of my cameras. Right now I'm running the Google Nest cameras and I've decided that I'm switching all of those over to Unify and that's gonna be pretty costly, but I'll be saving up my coins and making that purchase, making an update, and that will be my next video. Um, so stay tuned, um, it's coming. And I think that would be another good video, but for now, I'm out. Thanks for watching.